Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Unparalleled Universe for another action figure review. And today we're taking a look at the brand new Walgreens exclusive Marvel Legends Silver Centurion Iron Man. And I'm really happy to finally have an updated version of this armor. I was never a huge fan of the Toy Biz Silver Centurion Iron Man, only because I just didn't like the body. I thought the paint and stuff looks cool. I like the removable face mask and all that good stuff, but I was just never a big fan of those early Toy Biz Iron Man bodies. So as soon as Hasbro came along, and gave us that awesome 80th anniversary Iron Man right away I was like man I need a Silver Centurion in this style and then here we are less than like a year later and they gave it to us so it's pretty exciting but let's go ahead and get into it starting with the packaging you are able to see the figure right here you can see all the accessories that he comes with I like the Iron Man text here in front I like how it's very comic book style and it has like the bolts and the letters I think that's very cool on this side we get a look at some really nice looking artwork on the back we get a look at the figure itself and then there's a little bit of information up here about the armor over here we have the same art that's on the opposite side and then let's go ahead and take a look at something that's pretty awesome here when you remove the figure i don't usually do this but i thought this was cool there's a little bit of like a graphic behind the figure itself so i, I like that they put a little it's kind of cool that they put a little extra effort into the packaging you know i like that artwork so good stuff there but enough about the packaging let's go ahead and take a look at the figure and so here we have Iron Man right out of the box and I did go ahead and switch his hands out so we didn't have to look at the awkward blasting hands the whole time. And I will say right off the bat that there's a couple of things that Hasbro did here that kind of caught me by surprise. Some good things, some bad things, and we're going to go ahead and start off with those bad things. First off, I really don't like the way they did the head and neck setup. For some reason, they decided to make it so the neck and the head are one piece. So what that means is that you can't remove just the head and put the Tony Stark head from the 80th anniversary Iron Man on to this body and that really sucks this was a very strange decision because it would have been cool to be able to put that unmasked head on here and now we can't so i'm not really sure why they did this head and neck setup this way but i will say i do like some of the articulation that it offers but i just kind of i wish that the head was its own piece you know yeah so that was very strange and then another thing i don't want to say it's like a huge negative but one other thing i wish they would have done differently on this figure is i wish they would have given him the pinless technology because at first, I thought that this figure was basically just going to be a repaint of the 80th anniversary Iron Man with maybe some plastic overlay pieces on it to make it kind of feel different, kind of like what they did with the Iron Man 2020. It's basically 80th anniversary Iron Man with some new, like, parts floating around parts that make it kind of feel different i thought they were going to do that with the silver centurion but it turns out there's a lot of new sculpting work on here so if they were going to sculpt a bunch of new parts why not just go all the way and give us the pinless technology thing on the arms i think that would have been awesome it would have taken this figure to the next level as it is i think it's really good i love the way it looks and I'm pretty happy with it, but I think having that pinless technology on there would have been really nice. Um, but you know, maybe I'm just being like a spoiled brat at that point because they've been doing that lately and it looks cool. And I think it's like the direction they should be moving in. And I, I feel like this figure was kind of a missed opportunity for not including that. But you know, it is what it is. I, like I said, I might just be uh, acting spoiled at that point but um, I'm really surprised at how many new parts this figure has let's go ahead and bust out the 80th anniversary Iron Man just so we could take a look at that as you can see the upper torsos are completely different the lower arms are completely different even the hands are different the lower legs are different the feet are the same but then the head and neck setups are obviously very different besides the feet the other shared parts are the upper arms and the upper legs and that's it. So that's very surprising because they probably could have gotten away with using pretty much this 80th anniversary Iron Man and then throwing some plastic shoulder pads on it. But fortunately, they went ahead and gave us a bunch of new sculpting work on this guy. So I'm very happy with that. And I think overall, this is a good looking figure. I like the shine on the silver parts. Uh, the red isn't that shiny, but it still looks pretty good. But yeah, I like the way the silver looks on the arms and the legs. And yeah, I think it's a really nice looking figure and I'm happy with it. But let's go ahead and get in close and take a look at some of the details on this guy. I think they did a pretty nice job with the sculpting work on him. Starting off at the head, I think this is a nice looking head sculpt. I do like the faceplate. I think the eyes look good. I like how it's sunken back with the white and then outlined in black. Then you got the sculpted uh, <laughs> eyebrows that look cool. And then the head looks nice. We have some sculpting work on the neck. And then on the back, we got a lot of good stuff going on. Check all that out. It all looks nice. A lot of really good sculpting work. And the red, the red parts of the figure do have like a slight metallic look. It's definitely hard to pick up on camera, but looking at it in person, there's a bit of a shine to it. It's nowhere near as shiny as like the Toy Biz one or anything like that. 
but they definitely tried to add a little bit in there, so they get some points for that. But look at the sculpting work around the neck and on the shoulder pads. All that looks really good. The hands have some sculpting work on them. And then the feet. The lower legs. And, you know, the upper legs are just smooth. The upper arms are just smooth. But yeah, I'm surprised by how much new sculpting work we got on this figure, so that is pretty nice. And as far as accessories go, he does come with a lot of the same stuff that we've seen with other Hasbro Iron Man figures, including two different sets of hands. So first off, we have a pair of fists, and then we have a set of open hands that have a peg hole in them so you could attach his blast effects. And speaking of the blast effects, I do think these are very cool, even though we have seen these multiple times before. I still like them, and I like that they changed the color a little bit for this Iron Man. I think this color goes good with the red on this figure, so I think this this is really dope and these effects are cool because you have a lot of options you could take these parts out and then you just have that going you could remove these and put these in his hands that way you could give him like a bigger crazier more dramatic blast and then you could even put these like in the middle of that so you know you have some options in case he needs to like blast somebody crazy you know bam so yeah, I like these blast effects a lot. These are very cool. It would be nice if they started to include different types of blast effects. Well, I guess they've started to do that, right? Iron Man 2020 came with some different kind of things. But I wish uh, he would have come with some more different things, you know, just to give us more options. But yeah, these are cool. I like these a lot. And they are exactly the same as the ones we've seen with the 80th anniversary Iron Man. And now for some quick size comparisons, we have the Silver Centurion Iron Man alongside the Marvel Legends 80th anniversary Iron Man and the Marvel Legends Deluxe War Machine. And it makes me so happy to see all three of these armors together like this in such a uniform way. They look so good. So hopefully Hasbro continues down this path with Iron Man figures because man, they are just doing a great job with it. But yeah, I love the way these three figures look together. And now here we have them alongside the Mezco 112 Collective Classic Iron Man and the Marvel Legends Iron Man 2020. And man, how cool would it be if Mezco decided to tackle this armor? I'm surprised they didn't because, you know, this is one of the most popular Iron Man armors. And you would think that Mezco would have done it, but uh, they didn't. So I would like to see them revisit Iron Man and do this version. I think that would be really cool. And then now here we have them alongside the Revil Tech War Machine and the Sentinel Armorized Iron Man. And I'm not sure if the company Sentinel still makes Iron Man figures, but they would have done a good job with this Silver Centurion armor as well. But I don't know if they ever did one. Um, I'm not an expert on the Sentinel stuff because the scale is a little weird aside from this one. But I think it would have been cool if somebody just gave us the Silver Centurion armor with like a more metallic look. I think S Sentinel could have done a great job with it just as well as Mezco. But uh, yeah, it's pretty interesting that this armor kind of gets ignored. And then next up, we have them alongside the Toy Biz Marvel Legends Modular Iron Man, which came from the Face-Off 2-packs that came out back in the day. And man, I forget how tiny he is. Look how small he is next to this new Hasbro Iron Man figure. That's crazy. And then on the opposite side of that, we have the SH Figure Arts Iron Man from Age of Ultron. And then for some West Coast Avengers action, we have Iron Man alongside the Marvel Legends Mockingbird. And this Mockingbird is one of my favorite Marvel Legends female figures. I think they did a great job with that one. I remember the year this came out, I did a top 10 list and I had her above Deadpool and everybody was all pissed off at me but I still stand by that this is a dope figure and then on the opposite side of that we have the Marvel Legends Walgreens exclusive Moon Knight that recently came out and, and now here we have them alongside Hasbro's Crimson Dynamo and Hasbro's Titanium Man and I don't even think these figures are actually officially Marvel Legends figures I don't think they came out in any Marvel Legends line they just came out like with a bunch of Iron Man 2 figures. So I'll always have a special place in my heart for both of these guys because at the time Hasbro really put six inch figures to the back seat. And I, I think like these two were the only comic book six inch figures from Hasbro that we saw that year. Everything else was Iron Man movie based or three and three quarter inch. So it was pretty interesting. I'll always keep these guys around, but I definitely need to stop messing around and go pick up that Crimson Dynamo build a figure. I think I'm just gonna end up uh, buying the whole thing on eBay or something and I also need to get iron monger damn I'm, I missed out on that one But uh, I got to go backtrack and pick up both of those builder figures But anyways, I like both of these guys and I would like to see Hasbro do an updated titanium man and to finish off the size comparisons We have Iron Man alongside the Marvel Legends pizza spider-man and Marvel Legends Bucky cap and just for fun here We have them alongside the OG toy biz version and like I said, I've never been a huge fan of this figure 
I just don't like the way the body looks. I don't like the way the arms look, but I do love the red paint on it. In fact, I think the red on the Toy Biz version is much nicer than the red on the Hasbro version. I really wish that they would have went with the more metallic look for the red, just like the Toy Biz one. I think that would have been cool. But as you could see, the paint hasn't held up very well over time. It's faded in certain areas and it looks kind of bad. Another thing I like about the Toy Biz one though is this removable faceplate. I think that's dope, and I, I think that the Hasbro one should have had that one too, especially since they were doing this new neck style. It would have been okay if they gave us a removable faceplate. That would have been cool. But uh, yeah, overall, I think the, the Hasbro one is much better than the Toy Biz one. I just wish it had that metallic red paint and the removable faceplate. But and then for the articulation, if you already have the 80th anniversary Iron Man or Iron Man 2020, then you know exactly what to expect out of this figure. But there is one major difference, and that is the head. So let's go ahead and start off there. First off, his head does move side to side. He could look up to about right there. And then he could look down to about right there, which is kind of nice. Does have some tilt to it. And I think the joint that's in there is called a double ball peg. So it's it's kind of moving at the, where the, there's like a ball joint that goes into the torso. You get some movement there. And then the head and neck is actually on like another ball joint and it's kind of moving there. So you can get some kind of cool like shifting around and stuff. You know, so like I like that right there. And you got kind of a gap, but it's nothing crazy. You could definitely get some cool poses out of this head and neck setup, but it's just very strange that they did that. So it's kind of cool. I don't know. I mean, I would have preferred like the head being its own piece, but I mean, you get some cool movement out of this head joint. There we go. Like I like the way that looks kind of, but yeah, very strange. And then for the torso, we do have an ab crunch that goes forward to about right there comes back to about right there so your the ab crunch going back is going to help you get some flight poses even though it looks kind of weird but since the head can't go back that much that ab crunch is going to be uh, helping you out or the ab joint is going to help you out with flight poses so there you go and then we do have a waist swivel and then for the arms, they do go all the way around. And I really do love the way they did the shoulder pad here. I think this is awesome. I love how the shoulder pad just kind of travels with the arm. That's something they seemed very proud of when they were doing their live stream. And I think it came out nice. It works out really good. And then the arms do come out to the side. He does have ball jointed shoulders. But yeah, I love this shoulder setup. That's really cool. He does have upper bicep swivel. He has double jointed elbows, which get pretty good bend but because of the forearm piece here kind of prevents it a little bit and then the hands do have a swivel and a hinge but the blasting hands do not have a hinge so that's always goofy and then for the legs let's see what we have going on here his legs could come out to the side to about right there come forward to right there they could come back to right there he has upper thigh swivel double joint and knee which gets a pretty good bend no lower leg swivel which was a little disappointing i'm surprised he doesn't have like a boot swivel there and he doesn't have a swivel at the foot either so that kind of sucks but his feet can go forward <laughs> like to about right there if you wrap the actual foot around like the ankle piece but just naturally it goes to right there then it comes up to right there and then of course he has the rocking ankles so there you go like i said He's got some good articulation, but uh, nothing surprising. I'm kind of, I kind of like what I'm able to do with this neck thing, you know? I'm trying to make the best out of it, because even though I don't like it, and I feel they should have gone a different way, I feel like it's still very usable. You could still get some cool things going. So yeah, I think for the articulation, I'm pretty happy with it. I do wish that it had a lower leg swivel somewhere, though. But aside from that, I think we're, we're pretty good. All right, guys, so overall, even though I know this figure is far from perfect, I still like it a lot, and I'm very happy to finally have a really good Silver Centurion Iron Man figure for my collection. I never really liked the Toy Biz one. It did have a couple of cool things about it, like the removable face mask and the shiny red paint, but aside from that, I was never a big fan of that figure, and I don't think I ever displayed it, actually. I bought it, messed around with it for a little bit, and threw it in a box. So I'm happy that Hasbro finally came along and gave us a really nice Silver Centurion Iron Man that fits in very well with our modern Marvel Legends display. And even though they did a couple of things that are kind of bizarre, especially with the head and neck situation, I don't know why they decided to go that route. I think it's very strange, but... 
you know, it's okay. It's not a deal breaker for me. I kind of like some of the poses I could get out of it, but I would have much preferred that the neck and head were separate pieces. That way we could get that 80th anniversary unmasked Tony Stark head onto this body. And aside from that, I think it would have been cool if they used the pinless technology. I think that would have been dope too. But as is, I think it's a really nice figure and I'm really happy with it. I'm having a lot of fun messing around with it. He's fun to pose, even though the articulation is all very familiar and, you know, there's nothing mind blowing in terms of the articulation, I'm still having a good time messing with the figure, and the effects that he comes with are really cool too. It would have been great if he came with some different things, but as it is, I think it's it's pretty nice what we have going on here. So look at that. That's a cool looking figure, right? And I was really surprised by all the new sculpting on him. I think they did a good job with all of that. And I also really liked the shoulder setup. I think the way they did this was really cool so that the shoulder armor kind of just travels with the arm. I think that's dope. But yeah, man, this is a good figure. I know people are kind of getting sick of Iron Man figures, but honestly, if they're going to go through and like update all these classic armors, I'm down. I'm down for all the classic armors that they want to give us. Hopefully they give us like a proper modular armor and um, an extremist armor. And I would love to get a stealth Iron Man on this kind of body. Body, you know, I think that would be dope, but I hope they continue to do what they're doing with the Iron Man stuff because they're killing it at this point. This guy, the Iron Man 2020 and Iron Man 80th anniversary, they've all been really, really nice. And War Machine. War Machine is an amazing figure, so they're killing it with this stuff. But anyways, I think that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Also, be sure to hit the bell notification. That way, you are notified every time I do a live stream. And just so you guys know, I do a live stream every Tuesday and Friday, 7 p.m. Pacific time. So come through and hang out for that. They've been a lot of fun, so I'm, I'm enjoying doing those. So come through and join us and have a good time. Thank you so much for watching. Peace. Peace.